Hey guys, welcome to Skilllink. A lot of the equipment used in industries requires some kind of movement to perform certain work. This movement is generally achieved by a hydraulic system that uses fluid to transfer power rapidly and effectively. Air, water and oil can be considered as fluids, but today's power systems generally use oil as a hydraulic working fluid due to certain advantages over other types of fluid. The operation of fluid power systems is governed by the physical laws of fluid flow developed by Blaise Pascal. Pascal's law states that the pressure generated by applying a force to a confined incompressible fluid is transmitted throughout the fluid such that the same pressure occurs everywhere. This pressure acts perpendicular to the surfaces in contact with the fluid. But in general, fluid power systems may or may not have a confined enclosure. Fluids can either be at rest when being confined in a system such as in a hydraulic press or it can be moving as in a hydraulic turbine. A certain branch of science called hydrostatics deals with the fluids at rest or in a static state. On Earth, all fluids are subjected to the force of gravity. Due to this, the pressure increases as the depth of the fluid increases. This is called the law of hydrostatics. There are various places where we can see the use of hydrostatics. The pressure exerted on a dam by the reservoir is one such place. Another example is a siphon where the fluid moves up from the surface without the use of a pump. This is possible because the gravitational force on the liquid-filled inverted U-tube is higher at one end which creates a lower pressure at the other. Thus, the liquid moves from higher pressure to lower, finally falling into the lower container. A Pythagorean cup, also known as a greedy cup, is another example where hydrostatics is used that uses a siphon to drain the fluid if filled above the level of the siphon. Hydrostatics is also used in hydraulic jacks, which are hydraulic equivalents of mechanical levers. Pascal's law holds good for the fluids at rest, but if the fluid is in motion, as in hydraulic machines, then various effects due to the flow of fluid must also be considered. Therefore, hydrodynamics is used to study the motion of moving liquids. The law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, which means that the total energy of a system must remain constant. For a fluid in motion, the total energy comprises of the potential energy due to elevation and pressure and the kinetic energy due to the velocity of the fluid. The potential energy due to the elevation of the system is the stored energy equivalent to the height of the liquid column. While if a certain amount of fluid, say WKG, is under pressure, then the fluid will have potential energy due to that pressure also. If the same fluid is moving with some velocity, say V, then the fluid will have kinetic energy as well. The total energy of such a system will always be constant, although it changes from one form to another. For example, when the liquid falls from a height, it will lose its potential energy with an equal increase in pressure or kinetic energy. The conservation of energy is seen in a hydraulic press where the multiplication of force is compensated by the displacement of the pistons. Well, that was all about some basics of hydraulics. We'll be back with more content. So stay tuned and until next time, bye.